King Von's O Block and Bobby Schmurda's GS9 were taken down because of murder, while Young Thug and 6ix9ine's gangs were busted after they confessed to crimes in their lyrics. Gang takedowns in the rap scene keep getting crazier as rappers become hardened criminals. From robberies to drug trafficking, let's get into some of the craziest gang busts in hip hop. YSL. The Fulton County District Attorney claims the rapper, whose real name is Jeffrey Williams Jr., is part of a gang that used violence, drugs, and even murder to make money. On May 9, 2022, Young Thug, Gunna, and 26 others were listed as gang members by a grand jury investigation. An 88-page document by the jury alleged 182 instances of the group participating in gang activity. So far in the trial, prosecutors have presented lyrics and social media posts to prove gang affiliation. The indictment against YSL members had a list of 56 charges, which included murder, attempted murder, armed robbery, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, theft, drug selling, carjacking, and witness intimidation. The indictment singled out Young Thug as a mob leader. So far in the trial, it's not looking good for the rapper. Some of his homies seem to be turning their backs on him and taking plea deals. One of the most heartbreaking betrayals was from his own brother, Unfunk. Unfunk entered his negotiated guilty plea on one count of violating George's RICO Act, an account of theft by reception of stolen property, and his 12-year sentence was broken down into two years, being commuted to time served, and the remaining 10 years on probation. Reports surfaced that Unfunk had told on Thug, but he took to Instagram to rubbish those claims. Claims. Young Thug's brother wasn't the only one who betrayed him. One of his closest friends, Gunna, in and out of the music industry, also joined the long list of YSL members taking plea deals. Gunna was actually caught on video admitting that YSL was a criminal gang. Although Gunna still maintains that he didn't snitch on Thugger and didn't provide any information that would be used to incriminate YSL members, there is one person who has been caught on camera selling Young Thug out. This is none other than Lil Woody. Lil Woody, during an interrogation, admitted that he didn't even like hanging out with the YSL boss since it always led to him being in trouble. I'm already in a bad position. Can't see this thug and this me. This is my own. Whatever he do, I'm automatically just attached to him. The beat thing on this stupid. So I don't like being around this nigga. You know what I'm mean? saying? You don't call me up, come up there. Well, it seems like YSL is falling apart with its members jumping ship and cooperating with cops, which is a clear sign that cops really did take down the gang. Untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Gang. Brooklyn-born rapper Casanova pleads guilty to federal racketeering and drug charges. The U.S. Attorney's Office claims Casanova led the untouchable guerrilla Stone Nation Bloods Gang and directed a multi-state conspiracy in that role. On December 1st, 2020, the feds arrested 17 members of the untouchable guerrilla Stone Nation Gang. A few hours earlier, prosecutors from the Southern District of New York Federal Court declared a warrant for the arrest of Casanova, who they alleged was a leader within the gang and 17 of his gang members. The indictment against Casanova read like a script from a crime thriller. But for the Brooklyn rapper, the charges were all too real. The untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation was not just a group of individuals, but an alleged criminal enterprise with a hierarchy, codes, and a reach that extended from the urban heartlands of New York to the sun-soaked streets of Florida. Charges against them included racketeering conspiracy, conspiracy to distribute controlled substances, and possession of firearms in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime. The gang, according to prosecutors, was involved in a list of criminal activities, including narcotics trafficking, violent assaults, and even murder. The narrative painted by the authorities depicted Casanova as a man who had leveraged his rap persona to amplify the gang's street cred, using his music and social media presence to further their operations. The rapper was facing life in prison if convicted of the top charge against him, racketeering conspiracy. At first, Casanova pleaded not guilty to all his charges. However, he later changed his tune. On May 11, 2022, Casanova followed the footsteps of 12 other gang members and pleaded guilty to racketeering and narcotics offenses. He admitted to participating in shooting a man at a party in Florida over a gambling dispute in July 2020, a robbery in NYC in August 2018, and conspiring to traffic over 100 kilograms of weed. Before becoming famous, Casanova faced a life riddled with legal challenges. His adolescence was characterized by petty thefts and robberies, a means to an end in the unforgiving environment that surrounded him. This life of crime led to a robbery conviction, and Casanova spent time behind bars, where the allure of instant gratification and peer acceptance that once guided him gave way to introspection and a desire for change. Upon his release in 2014, Casanova sought a fresh start. He got a job as a construction worker where he labored to support his family. Later, he crossed over to music and soon he was at a crossroads between his newfound success as a drill rapper and his past criminal life. Well, he decided to follow both and now he and his crew are serving time behind bars. Having spent more than two years behind bars waiting for his sentencing, he finally got to know his fate. Although he was facing up to 60 years, he was sentenced to 15 years behind bars. 
Nine Trey Gangsters. Takashi 6 9 the rapper, pleading not guilty to racketeering and firearms charges. On the 18th of November, 2018, Takashi 6 9 and 11 other associates were arrested and charged with federal RICO and firearms charges, including conspiracy to commit murder and armed robbery, and faced up to life in prison. He was allegedly part of a violent sect of the Bloods known as the Nine Trey Gangsters. Although he had first pleaded not guilty, he soon changed his tune and cooperated with the authorities. Faced with 47 years in prison, the rapper decided to rat everyone out and deal with the consequences later. Federal judge sentenced rapper Takashi 69 to two years in prison today. The rapper faced up to 47 years in prison for racketeering but received leniency for helping prosecutors. It turns out he had his mind made up only a day after he was arrested. At some point, did you decide to cooperate with the government? Yes. When did that happen? Uh, a day after, um, November 19th, the day after we, we were taken down. The rapper did not only snitch on himself, but also had to take down other gang members to fulfill his end of the plea deal. While in court, he admitted to being part of the Nine Trey Gangsters. Were you a member of any gang? Yes, sir. What was the name of the gang that you were a member of? Uh, the Nine Trey Bloods. Audio from the rapper's court testimony also had him confessing to the various crimes that the gang had engaged in. From drugs to assaults, 6 9 was all too happy to let the world know what the Nine Trey Bloods had been up to in the streets. What sorts of things did Nine Trey members do? Uh, we participated in a lot of, uh, you know, violent crimes, robberies, assaults, drugs, such of that nature. And then came the moment of truth, the moment that would put the rapper into the history books as the man who folded under pressure and told. The street rapper who could not keep the street code. He was asked to identify members of the nine trade bloods present in the courtroom. And let's just say that there is no honor among thieves. Mr. Hernandez, do you recognize anyone in the courtroom who was a member of nine trade when you were a member? Yes. Who do you recognize? And if you, if you can identify that person, uh, you identify a, where they are sitting in an article of clothing that that person may be wearing. The rapper identified two members of his gang, Anthony Ellison and Mac. Anthony Ellison has a gray suit on. Luke Ajuman Mac has the brown suit on. Cops had managed to take down the gang and completely alienate their biggest money source, 6 9 from the rap industry. O Block. For Chicago police, the FBI, and federal prosecutors announcing charges all against five men who they say are all members of the O Block Street Gang. Members of Chicago's O Block Gang have been convicted in the 2020 murder of a rapper known as FBG Doc. On October 13th, 2020, the feds raided O Block and arrested five men for FBG Duck's murder. These were Charles Liggins, aka C Murder, Kenneth Robertson, aka Kenny Mack, to Carlos Offord, aka Lost, Christopher Thomas, aka C. Thang, and Marcus Smart, a.k.a. Mua. The five were charged with murder, unlawful use of firearms, racketeering, and assault with dangerous weapons. The charges carried a mandatory minimum of life upon conviction. FBG Duck had been shot and killed at Michigan Avenue and East Oak Street in the Gold Coast area of Chicago a few weeks earlier. The daylight execution of a high-profile figure on the streets of the Gold Coast was not just an assault on an individual. It was a challenge to the rule of law and a threat to the sense of safety in one of the city's most prestigious districts. Detectives were under immense pressure to unravel the case, which had few leads in the immediate aftermath. As the weeks turned into months, the police worked tirelessly, piecing together surveillance footage, eyewitness accounts, and social media activity. The breakthrough came when investigators discovered a trail of digital breadcrumbs that linked the crime to the O Block gang. Social media posts boasting about the attack, coupled with video evidence that placed suspects at the scene, began to paint a damning picture. What sold them out the most was a YouTube video that has now been deleted where they snitched on themselves. In the video, viewers easily pointed out in the comments section that they could spot the car that had been used in Duck's murder. The meticulous collection of evidence led to the arrest of the five O Block members who were charged with first-degree murder and attempted murder, as the attack had also left bystanders injured. The trial that followed was a spectacle, drawing attention from across the nation. Prosecutors presented a case that detailed the planning and execution of the murder, arguing that it was a calculated hit stemming from the gang rivalry that FBG Duck had often depicted in his music. Little has been heard about O since the arrest and conviction of the five. GS9.
On December 16, 2014, Bobby Schmurda and 14 other members of his GS9 squad were arrested at the infamous Quad Studios. The gang was charged with several crimes, including conspiracy to commit murder, reckless endangerment, and drug and gun possession. The 101 count indictment said that members of GS9 had murdered a rival gang member at a Brooklyn deli and nearly killed an innocent woman while shooting at rivals. GS9 was also accused of selling drugs and engaging in gun battles outside a Miami nightclub and even the Brooklyn Criminal Courts building. The indictment alleged that Schmurda was a leading figure in the violent street gang. The arrest shocked the music industry and the rapper's fan base. The rapper, just 20 years old at the time, faced the possibility of life in prison. The indictment listed a series of incidents dating back to 2013, including several shootings in Brooklyn that prosecutors claimed were part of a gang rivalry. As the legal process unfolded, details emerged about the evidence against Schmurda and his associates. Wiretapped conversations, surveillance footage, and the testimony of confidential informants formed the backbone of the prosecution case. The evidence suggested that the lyrics in Schmurda's songs were more than just artistic expression. They were, according to prosecutors, a mirror of real-life criminal activity. He failed to make bail and began speaking out about what he perceived as a lack of support from his label, which had profited from his gangster image. When I got locked up, I thought they were going to come for me, but they never came, the rapper said in an interview from Behind Bars. In the end, he was forced to take a plea deal, which saw him spend seven years behind bars. With the rapper now back in the streets, he is definitely staying away from any gang-related activity. Heath Street Gang. More than 40 accused gang members and their associates are facing federal charges. Reciting the lyrics of a music video they allegedly made to flaunt their crime. The Heath Street Gang, a name that has long cast a shadow over the streets of Boston, particularly around the Mildred C. Haley apartments, has a history that is deep-rooted in crime. For decades, this gang has woven itself into the fabric of Jamaica Plain, becoming synonymous with the kind of violence and lawlessness that keeps communities awake at night. Their activities have not been limited to the expected drug trafficking and territorial battle. They have expanded their criminal portfolio to include firearms violations and financial fraud. The investigation that led to the recent charges was carefully planned by law enforcement. For two years, federal agents, alongside local police, pieced together the puzzle of the gang's operation. They tracked the flow of illegal firearms, intercepted drug transactions, and followed the money trail of fraud that led back to the gang's doorstep. As the investigation deepened, the scale of the Heath Street gang's reach became clear. Their network was not confined to Massachusetts. It stretched across state lines, reaching as far as Maine and California. The gang had turned the Mildred C. Haley apartments into a safe space for criminal enterprise, from which they carried out their illicit activities with impunity. But the walls of this fortress were about to come crashing down. The break in the case came when investigators uncovered a series of music videos produced by the gang members. These were not just any music videos, they were bold anthems to their crime, with lyrics that referenced actual murders. It was a shocking and audacious move that would eventually contribute to their downfall. The gang had become so confident in their untouchable status that they did not foresee the storm that was about to hit them. With the evidence in hand, the federal prosecutors were ready to make their move. The charges laid out were not just a list of crimes, they were proof of the gang's reign over Boston's underbelly. Eight Trey Gang and Nine Ways Gangs. A prominent drill rapper and more than 30 other alleged gang members have been charged after a major takedown. On May 16th, the NYPD, in a carefully planned operation, descended upon the unsuspecting members of a notorious gang, among them two prominent rappers, Chef G and Sleepy Hollow. These rappers, whose tracks had amassed millions of views, found their worlds turned upside down as they were swept up in a net cast wide by law enforcement. The operation, a climax of tireless surveillance and intelligence gathering, targeted the eight Trey gang and their affiliates, nine ways gangs. These gangs had long cast a shadow over the neighborhoods of Flatbush and Crown Heights. The indictment, a staggering 140 counts, laid bare the extent of the gang's reach, implicating 32 individuals in a series of violent crimes. The charges were severe, linking the gang to no less than 12 shootings and a murder that had been brazenly captured on camera. The narrative spun by the authorities was one of brazen violence and utter disregard for the law. The gang, which had extended its tentacles from Brooklyn to Manhattan and even across state lines to New Jersey, was accused of ordering, orchestrating, and executing acts of chaos that left the community in its wake trembling. The operation's narrative took a darker turn as Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez revealed the alleged role of Chef G's music earnings in the gang's operation. It was claimed that the rapper had used his financial gains not for upliftment, but to help facilitate further gang activity, encouraging members to partake in violent crimes. One such act of violence, a mass shooting in Brooklyn, stood out for its sheer audacity and brutality. The suspects had reportedly pulled up in a vehicle and unleashed a hail 
hail of bullets on members of a rival gang. The pandemonium that ensued saw one person killed and five others injured as bystanders fled the scene in terror. The aftermath of the shooting revealed a chilling celebration of violence. D.A. Gonzalez recounted how Chef G allegedly rewarded the shooters with a lavish steak dinner at a Manhattan restaurant, a toast to their deadly score against their ops. After spending 14 months in jail, the Chef G is currently out on bond after posting a whooping $1.5 million bond. However, with text messages between him and his gang being used as evidence, Chef G has a long way to go to get his freedom back. Silverback Gorillas. Rapper Sue Surf facing a judge today after being indicted in a federal racketeering case. And Sue Surf is one of 10 people listed on the indictment that's part of the racketeering case. Sue Surf was arrested on October 13th, 2022 by the U.S. Marshal Service Regional Fugitive Task Force at a home in Jersey City. The arrest was not a quiet affair. Sue Surf, accompanied by a woman, found himself cornered, leading to a tense standoff. He barricaded himself within the building on Wilkinson Avenue, a move that seemed to echo the defiance he often displayed in his lyrics. But as the reality of the situation set in, and with law enforcement encircling the premises, Surf eventually surrendered. It was a moment that would mark the beginning of a new battle for the rapper, one that played out in the courtrooms rather than the rap arena. The 52-page indictment charged Surf with racketeering conspiracy and possession of firearms and ammunition by a convicted felon. Nine other people were charged in the indictment, facing a myriad of other charges including carjacking, possession with intent to distribute fentanyl and cocaine and more. As the news spread, details emerged that painted a broad a picture of the indictment. Sue Surf was allegedly part of a group known as the Silverback Gorillas, a set affiliated with the Crips gang. The federal racketeering charges suggested a level of criminal organization that went beyond the individual, implicating a network of individuals in serious offenses. Sue Surf faced up to 30 years in prison, a sentence that could see him spend the prime years of his life behind bars. However, the battle rapper took a plea deal that saw him sentenced to five years behind bars. Sev side. Two teenagers are facing attempted murder charges for a shooting at a Bronx barber shop. Police say the shooting happened inside a shop on East Gun Hill Road around 645 October 22nd. In the aftermath of the shooting that saw 24-year-old Oscar Hernandez shot and killed at a barber shop in Harlem, the police swiftly launched an investigation to bring the perpetrator to justice. The initial focus of the investigation was on Kevin Perez, also known as Kay Flock, who was quickly identified as the prime suspect. On December 24, 2021, he was taken into custody by the police, marking a significant development in the pursuit of justice. He was subsequently arraigned in Manhattan Criminal Court, where he faced first-degree murder charges. Well, things went from bad to worse for the rapper as he was hit with a RICO charge the following year, while still behind bars. If convicted of all the charges against him, including racketeering conspiracy, murder in aid of racketeering, use of a firearm resulting in death, attempted murder and assault with a dangerous weapon in aid of racketeering, use of a firearm for attempted murder and assault with a dangerous weapon, K. Flock could be faced facing a life sentence according to federal sentencing guidelines. The indictment revealed the alleged crimes committed by K. Flock and his five co-defendants. Turns out, Perez and his Sevside co-defendants became involved in the gang as early as 2017. But what sets this case apart from others is the inclusion of social media posts and song lyrics as evidence of criminal gang activity. The indictment alleges that the members of Sevside have terrorized neighborhoods in the Bronx and Manhattan through acts of violence, including killings and shootings. Rolling 20 Neighborhood Bloods. On a day that seemed like any other, the rhythm of Hoodrich Pablo Juan's life was disrupted by the long arm of the law. Arrested on RICO charges, the rapper found himself facing a legal battle that could potentially derail everything he had worked so hard to build. Turns out, the state of Georgia had been investigating over 40 suspects, including him. The final indictment was massive, including 59 counts of violations of the Georgia Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act, 24 counts of aggravated assault, and four counts of kidnapping. The indictment alleged alleged that the rapper was a central figure in the Rolling 20 neighborhood Bloods gang. The charges laid out against them were serious and numerous, including four counts of murder, 92 counts of RICO, trafficking methamphetamine, and trafficking heroin. As the wheels of justice began to turn, the rapper's legal team engaged in negotiations with prosecutors. Ultimately, a plea deal was struck. Hoodrich Pablo Juan agreed to plead guilty to the charges, and in exchange, the prosecution offered a sentence that was less severe than the potential maximum. The court handed down a 15-year sentence. However, he would serve at least five years in prison, with the possibility of the remaining 10 years being served on probation. A prior 1017 Eskimo member, Juan was one of the most promising standouts of Gucci Mane's lineup. However, like many other talented artists, legal issues frequently complicated his career. The 33-year-old has stayed busy while incarcerated as he's released three new projects since being locked up in 2020. And once he is out, his fans can only hope that he stays away from trouble. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on one of the boxes playing on your screen to watch 
much more similar content.